Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about the botfly today. The botfly, also known as the Dermatoba hominis, that's a scientific name for it, is a bee-like parasite that likes to use your body as a comfortable shelter for its larva. Now you're probably thinking that it stings you like a bee and gets its larva in you that way, but it does not sting at all. It just looks similar to a bee, so yeah, don't worry about that. The way it gets its eggs into you is a little more complicated than that. The botfly is a master of flight maneuvering. It actually catches a mosquito in mid-flight and sticks its eggs right on the mosquito's body. It's pretty amazing. The eggs are surrounded with a glue-like substance that the botfly secretes, so they aren't going anywhere for the time being. Then the botfly just releases the mosquito and lets it on its way. The mosquito is left unharmed so it can continue annoying people. When the mosquito lands on somebody and starts to feed on the person's blood, well, but yeah, starts to feed on the person's blood, the body heat from the person actually causes the eggs on the mosquito to hatch. These botfly larvae that come out of the eggs, they don't need anybody telling them what to do. They're just born with the instincts to follow the warmth of the person's body and they hop on board. They either crawl through the hole that the mosquito has conveniently made for them, or they can use their small sharp teeth to make an entry into their new home. They go inside and start to feed on the actual flesh of the host. This goes on for about six weeks and the person will finally be able to notice a bump where this little worm is living. Now when people see this lump, most will go to the doctor to get diagnosed. The doctor should ask you if you've been traveling lately. Lucky for us, the botfly only lives in warm, humid places, humid places, so we are safe here in Washington. They are very, er, but they are very common in Mexico and South America, so make sure you watch out for any mosquitoes if you vacation there. Now that the doctor knows that you have the botfly maggot inside of you, it's time to get it out. The doctors can simply numb the area, cut open the lump, and pull the larva out. I do not recommend trying home remedies because they can be painful. The little larvae have small rings of black barbs around their body that latch onto the person's flesh. If you try to pull it out, you should feel resistance. In most cases, when people do this, they end up ripping off the body of the maggot, but accidentally leave the head of the maggot still in there, and this can cause infection. To keep the maggot from resisting like that, you can actually cover the small hole in the lump with anything from Vaseline to bacon, and the little creature should suffocate by the next day. Covering the hole blocks the air the maggot needs to live. The final way to treat the botfly is to just let it run, let it run its course. The botfly will eventually be too big to grow inside you anymore and will leave the body on its own. The almost fully grown larva will drop out of the lump drop out of the lump onto the ground and sprout wings and fly away. That concludes our little video session on the botfly. Thanks for watching, even though you're forced to. Bye. Hey, it's me again, but this time I'm telling you all about the hookworm. Hookworms are nasty parasites that develop and travel in many different places in your body. Some symptoms of the hookworm are general weakness, paleness, headache, dizziness, noise in ears, fatigue, swelling in body tissues, nausea, nausea, vomiting, and shortness of breath. The symptoms of this parasite are unpleasant, so you definitely want to protect yourself from them. Hookworms can be found in the soil all around the world. The main point of entry for a hookworm is through a person's feet. As you can probably guess from this, the most common people who get hookworms are those who run around barefoot in fields. It is important to wear foot protection to keep those hookworms away. When a person steps on a hookworm, the hookworm latches onto your skin and burrows in, just like a botfly. The hookworm, however, is so small when it starts out that it can travel through your bloodstream. They travel to your lungs and get coughed up into your mouth. Then the small hookworms are swallowed into your digestive system. This is where the hookworm sets up shop, in your small intestine. They attach themselves to your small intestine and feed on your blood. This can cause anemia in some people. As the worms grow, symptoms worsen and you can be easily diagnosed with hookworms through a stool sample. Doctors can easily prescribe you with medications that will kill the hookworms and they will be excreted the next time you pass solid waste. 
Over 740 million people worldwide are affected by hookworms. Hookworms are in the United States, but they are less common because of our improved hygiene. Still, you should always wear foot protection when outside and make sure your lawn is clear of any fecal matter. The only way the soil can be contaminated is through contaminated waste, so make sure you clean up after your animals and take them to the vet to get them dewormed. Thanks for watching, even though you were forced to. Bye.